start. What's common between a cup of coffee, Protestantism, and the discount? Pita to hati. Pita ida nahi hai. Aao bed. What's common between a cup of coffee, Protestantism, and the discovery of United States of America? To find the answer, let's peep a little bit into one of the most conveniently forgotten pages of human history. Most Americans do not know that the morning cup of coffee connects them to the Ottoman Empire. And only a few of them realize that this historic Islamic state helped give birth to Protestantism, the dominant doctrine of Christianity that is followed by almost half of America's population. And even fewer people know that the European explorers who discovered the Americas did so because of the Ottomans and other Muslims controlling the trade between Europe and Asia. Alan Mikhail, professor of history at Yale University, in his article in the Washington Post, highlighted the role of Sultan Selim I in discovering the new word and American lifestyle that begins with the morning coffee. Mikhail says that when Americans think of the Middle East, they often see it as a theater of American wars and a region essential for its oil. And yet, he says, we all owe important parts of our culture and history to the most important empire in the history of the Middle East, the Ottoman Empire, and specifically to one Sultan who lived half a thousand years ago. Last year marked the 500th anniversary of the death of Sultan Selim I, the ninth Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, whose life spanned more than half a century of world history. Selim's victories in the wars of the Middle East, North Africa, and the Caucasus doubled the Ottoman lands almost three times more than the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus, the German Catholic priest Martin Luther, the Italian diplomat and political philosopher Nicole Machiavelli and others of his contemporaries. Salem's victories literally changed the world. Salem ruled more lands than almost any other country in his time, and he held the keys to global domination. Salem controlled the center of the world, had a monopoly on trade routes between the Mediterranean Sea, India, and China, and had ports in all the major seas. And so the Ottomans um, through translation of, of both cartographic knowledge, but also some early, what we might think of as ethnographic, ethnographic materials, come to learn something about the Americas and are aware, of course, of um, the fact that, that Spain um, has found these new territories. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the kind of larger point here is that, um, you know, we might say, well, if the, Os if the Ottomans were so powerful, why didn't, they, why didn't they cross the Atlantic? And my answer to that is they didn't need to cross the Atlantic. They held territory on three continents. They were one of the largest states um, in the world in the 16th century. They, they're the ones who controlled trade routes between the Mediterranean and um, the Indian Ocean world. And it's precisely because of that, that Spain and, and, and Portugal are looking for routes around the Muslim world. And so it's in some ways an act of desperation um, to cross the Atlantic, an act of desperation that the Ottomans um, don't need to undertake. Control of the global coffee trade was one of the drivers of Ottoman Empire's economy from the time of Salem until the early 18th century. In fact, Salem's army was the first to discover the coffee plant in Yemen. The Ottomans discovered how to prepare coffee and established cafes devoted solely for it. The Ottoman cafe was a major landmark of the empire's culture and these cafes were then adopted by the Europeans along with other Ottoman entertainment habits during the early modern era and Istanbul's cafes played a prominent role in popularizing the cafe and coffee globally. Apart from this, Salem's dominance of lands posed a spiritual challenge to Christian Europe, which was at that time a continent of small emirates and quarreling hereditary city-states, which were not, individually or collectively, comparable to the giant Islamic empire. In an attempt to explain this imbalance in the balance of power, many Europeans found answers not only in politics, but in what they considered their moral failures. The most influential of these criticisms came from the German monk 
Martin Luther, who pointed out that the weakness of Christianity in the face of Islam stems from the moral deviation of the Catholic Church. The corruption of the Pope, he argued, eroded the Christian spirit from the inside, making the entire body of the Christian world fragile and thus vulnerable to external enemies. Martin Luther benefited from the European conflict with the Ottomans and this gained him the time to propagate his ideas among the masses. Due to the military mobilization against the Ottomans, the Catholic forces, who were obviously anti-Protestant, were unable to send additional forces to suppress the early Protestant movements. As a result, Luther and his supporters were able to gain a foothold to spread the Protestant faith across German cities and then eventually spread throughout the world. Had it not been for the Sultan, America in particular and the world in general would be a lot different than it is today. Share this video to somebody you think should hear this and if you like to support us, please subscribe to this channel. And if you like the kind of content that we bring out for you, share this video.